Hello and welcome to Conix. In this tutorial and the following tutorials, we will be studying these two objects. So it's been the circle and the ellipse, or as you may have called them in primary school, an oval. But before we go on to look at their various names, properties and facts about them, we should have a look at how they're created in real life. So if we take here the circle, if we had a cylinder in real life, and we got a horizontal plane and cut that cylinder, we would get a circle. The same is true if we had a cone and we got a horizontal plane and we cut it, we would also get a circle from that. Now, when I talk about planes and when we've talked about planes in class previously, we've always had the examples that a plane is like the floor, for example, or the ceiling above our head. But in drawing, we sometimes talk about planes as in they are cutting objects as well. So I often like to think of planes, if you look over here, cutting this cone and this cylinder, I like to think of them like sheets of glass. But these sheets of glass, these planes have no thickness. They have a length and they have a, a depth, a width, but they have no thickness, okay? so. When we look then at the ellipse and how they go, they cut that, for example, this diagram here, we can see that we get an oval shape out of that. And the same thing is true by cutting a cylinder at an angle with a plane, it will produce an elliptical shape. So now after looking how these conics are formed, we're going to go ahead and do a few sketches of them. We're going to take our time doing it as well. So the first one I'm going to do over here is going to be the ellipse, okay? <clears throat> now, so we'll draw a cone, first of all. And we're going to draw a cylinder over here beside it. Now, when we're drawing them in 3D, the cylinder at the top of it will look like an oval or an ellipse. And they don't have to be big, you can keep them small just to get the point across. And we're going to put in our cutting planes then after that. And I often like to think of these cutting planes like sheets of glass. So you can imagine if they were to be shoved through these objects, if they were soft, you know, they would cut them in half and they would make the shapes that we're talking about. Now an elliptical shape will still be an elliptical shape, but they can vary in size, okay, and the length from here to here and the width. And it will depend on the size of the cone and the angle that it's been cut at, etc. Now a good little tip for you there when you're drawing your cut, uh, your shape that's going to make out this cut. I draw a line that's parallel there to the edge and that will give you kind of a place where to start and stop down there at the bottom and then you can draw in your elliptical shape. I'm going to do this the closer side a bit heavier on both of them. Then we'll round out the bottom here.
Now both of these after being cut by an inclined plane or a plane at an angle will produce the elliptical shape. And they will change of course the size of them depending as I said on the size of the object and the incline the angle that the plane is at cutting it. So the next one for the circle over here, we're gonna draw in simple cone again. Remember, it doesn't matter how many light lines you have, keep putting them in until you get the one you want and then go over it heavy. So two horizontal planes cutting those objects will produce a circular shape, okay? That's what both of those guys are going to produce. And remember when we're talking about planes in class, he used to state that the most obvious planes to you would be the floor or the ceiling, okay? And they will produce a circular shape. And this one, these two guys will produce an ellipse. Now we'll come back later, you can color them in. They're just simple sketches for now. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to actually draw out these guys. So we'll get the handy sky out of the way first, which is a circle. And we're going to come back when we've them drawn and then we're going to label both of them in and color them. Okay, that's our circle. And I made that guy radius 60 if you want to keep it the same size. Over here, I have two lines. The big line is 180 mil long. That's 90 plus 90. And that's called the major axis. This guy is 60 from here to here and 60, which is 120. And this is called the minor. Now, when you draw these two lines, the next thing we're going to do is draw two circles. On the minor axis, we're going to draw a circle, radius 60, you can see where I'm getting my starting point, and that guy is called the minor circle, because he's on the minor axis. Okay. Then we'll put down our compass again, and this time we're drawing a bigger circle, and you can see where I'm setting my radius to is 90 mil because this is for the major axis. And surprise, surprise, this one is called the major circle because it's on the major axis. Now you'll do them fairly lightly. I might do them a bit heavier just to make sure they're seen. So there we have our two circles, two lines, two circles. That's the minor circle. And this is the major over here. So, as I said, we've two lines and two circles. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to get our 60 30 set square because I want to divide this, these circles up into 12 equal parts. 
So do like so. So after doing that, and I did it fairly lightly, you would have 12 equal divisions in your circle. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Now this line doesn't need to go all the way up to the top because when you drew those two lines, the major axis and the minor axis, you now have straight away four points on the ellipse that you are going to draw. Okay, four points. By dividing up the, the circles, we are now going to find a couple, two other points in each quarter that will help us to draw in a freehand curve of an ellipse. So I'm just going to get a couple of colours here. I'm just going to put kind of a light orange there on the major axis. And everywhere these lines hit the major axis or the major circle I'm going to make some vertical lines Okay, so I have eight lines drawn there. Now they're just they're just going down three three or four centimeters. Some are longer, some are shorter. And the other color I'm going to take now is green. You can take any color you want, and I'm going to put it on the minor axis. And anywhere those dividing lines that we drew in hits the minor circle. I'm going to do these horizontal lines out until I hit the orange line. Now, if your orange line isn't short enough, you might need to drop it down a bit more or bring it up. And when you've that done, what you have got out of this is you've got eight more points. So we had one, two, three, four. Now we've got five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And this is the circle method, okay? Of drawing an ellipse. There's different ways. So when you have your 12 points there, the first thing I always do is I come to the ends. Because what you want at the ends, if you can imagine this was like a rugby ball, you want these most outer points to be flat. Now on the minor axis, people usually draw them flat anyways. But where they go, go wrong often is they come down to here and they have a point. So you'd never see a rugby ball with a point. Think about a plane, the flat nose that has just gently curving at the very front, okay? And it's the same. So one, two, three, four, and only then do I start joining in the dots. Now obviously you won't be on camera at home, so please feel free to turn your sheet around if you find it handier as you're drawn in your freehand curve. Now that I'm happy enough with that, I'm going to go over it a bit heavier. Ooh. 
And that is our ellipse drawn. So we have an ellipse and we have a circle. And we know how they're produced in real life. So the last thing we're going to do now is we're just going to label them up. Okay. So there's different parts. So I'm going to write them in and I'd like you to do the same at home, please. So we'll kick off with the ellipse. So we have the minor axis and we have the major axis. We have the major circle and we have the minor circle. Another point we have here is we have the vertex. And there's a vertex on either end of the major axis. Now there's two other points called focal points, but I'm going to come back to them in the next uh, tutorial. Another thing we can have on an ellipse is something called a tangent. Now a tangent can be anywhere, okay? So pick a point anywhere. And we're just going to draw it in roughly for today. Okay, but I'm going to show you exactly how to draw them in in later tutorials. That would be a tangent. T-A-N-G-E-N-T. -E and there's another line that often comes along with tangents. And it's called a normal. Now a normal is always at a right angle to a tangent. Okay, so we have tangent, a normal, minor axis, major axis, major circle, minor circle, and the vertex is there. Now, on the circle, you can also have a normal on a circle. And write this in in pencil, perhaps, to come out heavier. And the same way, with the ellipse, a tangent will be at a right angle to a normal, or a normal will be at a right angle to a tangent, either or. So we have a normal and a tangent. Another thing, of course, with a circle is we'd have a diameter, which would be the distance from one side to the other going through the center point. We have a radius, which is a line from the, the or the distance from the center to any point on the circumference. We could have a quadrant, which would be a quarter, quadrant, quarter of a circle. We could have a segment, which would be this area in here. I could have a sector. And the last thing I'm going to put in there is I could have a chord. Now the segment is the area itself. Okay. That's the segment, that shaded area there. A chord is just a line from one point to another. Not going through the center though.
So that is all. There are the two focal points which I'm going to show you to put in in a later tutorial. That's all the parts of the ellipse and this is all the parts of the circle. These are the sketches here above, how they come into being, okay, by cutting these geometric objects. So I'm going to stop talking now and I'm going to colour this in and I'd like you to do the same at home please. Now, there's one last piece I want to put in with the circle, okay? So let's say that's the full circle, okay, the outside there, which would be the circumference. But if I was just talking about a point from here to here, I'll just sketch it in on top of it heavy. That would be an arc, okay? So it's part of the circumference from two points. We'll call them A to B, okay? So that's tutorial one on conics, folks. Um, take care, stay safe, and more videos to come.